singing with Patty Page's songs, all the old gospel songs, Victory in Jesus, and oh, my heart was just flying across the Leaky Leaky Highway and enjoying so much the Spirit of God through song. You know, songs just can lift you and put you in the very presence of God. I really, really say to you, get a good cassette or cassette, push it in there when you're driving and either be taught or have music and have the wonderful feeling of being so close with the Lord. This morning, as always, Catherine, you want me to go first? Yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, listen, I gotta remind you, please, that not only do we have a new Heartline Prayer line now that they'll put up there, but we have our breakfast, our TV breakfast. They'll put the prayer line up. I seem to have lost my prayer card here with a number on it. They'll put up the TV breakfast Saturday, June 10th, Alamoana Hotel, Hibiscus Ballroom. Dr. Paul Kumano and his Grace Praise Band and all the wonderful testimonies that we always have. It's 9 a.m. you come to register. 9.30 we sit down and eat. It's a television show. We have beautiful testimony. We have beautiful piano playing. We have a lovely Korean lady who's going to bring her little Korean children to dance for you. I, she's from Pastor Cho's, Cho's Church over in Korea. And I have got lovely surprises for you at that Alamoana Hibiscus Ballroom. And we need about 350 people, so please call the number down there and let them know that you're coming. If you like a whole table, you know, I'll put it up around the dance area. You know, we keep the little dance area open there so that we can move around in the Holy Spirit when Paul begins to play and the music begin, you just want to get up and move your feet and be joyful and happy and be filled with the wine of the new, the wine of the Holy Spirit, you know. Be ex not filled with the excess of wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, which means you do get happy and your feet begin to move. And then at the end, you know, we always have prophetic ministry and then the beautiful little heart-like craft fair afterwards. So you've got a great big morning ahead and a full of the presence of God. Of course, you know that we televise it, so we ask you not to bring the little children because they like to pull on the TV cords and drive our crew wild. So that's why we don't have little children, all right? But we do have lots of men and women and husbands and wives and people. You want to have fun with the Lord? Come to the TV breakfast. Also, I think, I hope you have Charmaine's number up there. She's going to be our heart light prayer line and we'll keep, there it is, 671-6556. And sometimes after the show, if you want to talk to someone, this particular lady, I love her. She's got an open prayer line to the Lord's heart, and she'll pray with you. Whatever your need is, if you're hurting and you're feeling bad, she will pray with you. And that's why she called me up. She said, Phyllis, you really need to have a prayer line there. You know what? I do. And I thank God that you out there are so willing to just volunteer. Sometimes I don't think about those good things. And you did. Thank you, Charmaine. And you'll love Charmaine. She has the Blessings from Heaven cleaning business, just a little commercial, but you know, they do such a beautiful job. And then she's offered to serve Heartlight too through being there for prayer for you. She'll pray like crazy for you, just like my Catherine does. She'll pray, and the Lord will set you free, and you're going to be happy again. Heart Light's main job, our main heart vision, 
is that you're happy in Christ. You shouldn't be down, moping around and unhappy. You should be alive and full of the Spirit. This morning, as you know, if I have a little music from the back, the boys in the back room there. That's my crew that does such a good job. This word was given to me this morning again at the breakfast table, you know. And the, pe the Lord was reminding me, people are very fragile. You know, when we say we're not sensitive and we don't feel things, that's not true. Everyone feels things, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Every human being is sensitive. Sometimes people say, oh, no, I'm not sensitive. And then I know that they really are because that's kind of a defense. I'm not going to be hurt by anybody. I'm not sensitive. We all are. And it's a good emotion because it means you can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You can be aware and listening and caring. And I've always felt that the Holy Spirit was sensitive to our needs. He's sensitive to us. So we must be sensitive to others' needs. I don't think there's anything more important in being a Christian and being sensitive to the needs of others. My dear Priscilla was very sensitive to the need of a young girl in the restroom yesterday where we were lunching with the two girls that I have with you, with me today to share with you. My Donna Bartram and Lois Bell are here, both pastors and prophetesses and counselors and intercessions. You say it, that's what they are. They've been in the Lord a long time. Their church, the Roses of Sharon, they're two beautiful roses too. You're gonna to see them and talk with them this morning. But I wanna come back. Priscilla was over there in the restroom. She saw a young girl that had been heavy on drugs and she stuck with her. She stayed in there. She gave up her lunchtime with us to sit and talk and be sociable to see if she could help this girl to find her way into someone who would care for her. She stuck with it. And I'm coming to the area that the Lord gave to me this morning. My child, don't lose the mantle I've placed on your capable shoulders. This is a mantle of service. Do you know what ministry means? It means to serve. It doesn't mean big, I am a big minister. It means I am a server. You know, Jesus was the servant with a capital S. He was a servant. So therefore, we are servants. And we're called to be servants. To be a servant is the greatest gift in the world. In 1 Corinthians 4, 2 of the Living Bible, it says, the most important thing that a servant does is he does just what his master tells him to. Now, Jesus is our good master, and we are his good servants. And just as Jesus always did the will of the Father, did you hear that? Jesus always did. He was listening. He was sensitive to the will of the Father and also the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our good master and we are his good servants. The Lord himself examines our hearts to see what service our service is. That means the motive in our heart of the service that we do as ministers of the gospel. What is our heart motive? And further on in the scripture, it says we can't jump to conclusion, conclusions as to whether someone is a good servant or not. 
you know, we like to say, well, that one's a good one, and that one isn't, and that one is, and that one isn't, and you can sure look at the TV and be very critical as to, well, I like this servant, and I don't like that one, or I like this, and you know, what the word's saying here is we can't jump to conclusions as to whether someone, personally, is a good servant or not. For when the Lord comes, He will turn on the light so that everyone can see exactly what each one of us is like deep down in our hearts. Boy, you know, that's why I want to wash my heart all the time because our heart is desperately wicked. Sometimes our motives get in there and we follow after the wickedness in our heart and then our motives are not correct. So God is looking deep down at our heart's motive. Whether we're a minister or not doesn't matter, but it is more responsibility if you are serving the people, if you are serving God, as to what the motive is. How plain, how clear that motive is. One day that'll all come to light, and then everyone, the Word says, will know why we have been doing the Lord's work. Wow! I've always thought, boy, when that day comes where everything I've done all my life is exposed to the Lord, to everybody and to the Lord on judgment day, I sure want to have everything under the blood of Jesus. You know what that means? I confessed it. I said, Lord, I'm sorry my heart was wrong. Examine my heart whether I'm a real Christian or not. And forgive me for those things that I have done wrong or said wrong, which I do all the time. And Please clear it off my slate, Lord. Don't bring it up again at Judgment Day. Oh, I don't want to have, you know, please, please, if you're in the hospital and you know that you, you're, you're going to go home to the Lord right now, get that clear with God. Say, Father, forgive me, for I've sinned against your heart. Forgive me. Jesus, cleanse me through your blood. Make me pure and clean again and holy so I can come before the Lord clean and holy before God. That's really all that counts. It's not our works that's going to save us. We can't boast in our works how good we have done, how much I prophesy, how much I understand ministries. If I give my goods to be burned or my body to be burned or if I give up everything that I have, that's not going to get me to heaven, folks. It's the motive of my heart. It's the love that we have to the Lord to keep a clean heart and a right spirit and a right motive. There is the right spirit. A wrong spirit can divide. A right spirit draws together in unity and in love. It's an excellent spirit. Then everyone will know why we have been doing, why we have been doing the Lord's work. When the Lord reveals that to everyone and shows the light in on us, wow. At that time, God will give to each one whatever is pleasing or whatever praise is coming to them. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Do you notice? He didn't say minister. He didn't say, well done, my good and faithful pastor, teacher, apostle, preacher evangelist, whatever, he said, well done, my good and faithful daughter servant, my good and faithful son servant. The kingdom of God, folks, in 1 Corinthians 4, 26, Living Bible, the kingdom of God is not just talking. It is living by God's power. Now, I want to say that again. Because I can do a lot of talking, but if I don't do the walking and the living of it out, of the word out, it doesn't do me any good just to store that word away in my heart and not be that which I have stored. Thy word, if I put in my heart, you know, that I might not sin against you, that's good to store it away, but you've got to bring it out too, every day, to someone. The kingdom of God is not just talking but it is by living God's power every day. My child, have and cultivate a servant's heart. 
one who serves freely without payment back. Do we serve because we want something back? I love love, and I love the love of the Lord. And when I'm able to serve someone, and they're happy, and they're loving back, that is a reward. But that's the only debt, you know, we have, is to love others. We want to serve because we are serving the Lord. In all that we do, we're serving Jesus. Serve your husband, serve your family, serve your friends, serve your church, serve Jesus. How well do we serve? Are we a first-class server? Am I? I don't think I am many times. I serve up something I wish I hadn't said. I dish out something I wish I hadn't dished out. And I say, Lord God, hold my mouth and my heart and my mind. Cleanse me. Discipline my mouth. Not only I don't want to say something wrong on television that would offend you, but I don't want to say something before the Lord that would offend Him and do a disservice to the Lord's name. Are you one and are we one who serves freely without any payment back? Do we give our love freely? And don't say, you got to love me back now because I loved you. you got to love me back. I gave you, now you give back. Uh-uh. God loves back unconditionally. Do we have a willing spirit, willing hands, willing heart to do God's will? If you serve the best of mercy, you'll receive mercy. If you serve compassion, you'll receive compassion. And if you don't, that's all right. It's okay. If they don't love you back, that's all right. They didn't love Jesus back. He served with no reward. His, was, his reward was crucifixion. So, folks, we want to go the way the Lord went. Sometimes that will mean for us to die daily. I don't like dying daily. I gotta be honest with you. It doesn't feel good. You have to discipline your heart and it, it's tough. You find that tough too? Because I want to be me. I want to do it my way. But God wants us to do it His way. And a good servant follows what the master says to do in the Word of God. That's a good servant. If you serve compassion, and if you serve the very best of mercy, you will receive compassion and mercy. But if you serve hard judgment and criticism, I wonder if that's from God's heart. You will be judged and I will be judged as we judge one another. So many people are hurting out there, folks. Hundreds, thousands of people hurting so bad. They're so fragile, you could blow them over with a hurting word. And sadly, they're not all in the world. Many of them are Christians like myself. Deep, deep down in our wells, the heart of our will, we hold on to some hurt. And if we don't cleanse that out and get it healed by God, when someone comes along and pushes on that area, the hurt hurts again because we haven't forgiven. And I've done it. How about you? And I need to forgive and forget like God does. Today, maybe you need to show a little compassion to others and also to yourself. Don't keep the hurts in your heart. Let go of them. The hurt against your loved ones, the hurt against your church if you have it, the hurt against the authorities, judges, policemen, doctors, teachers. Oh, you can have hurts. The authorities against your cousin, aunties, uncles, neighbors, all those things, in-laws, don't hold on to hurt. As you let go of hurt, you can be the 
best servant ever. You can serve up love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering. Isn't that a nice thing to serve on the table of the Lord? Meekness, goodness, faith, patience, self-control. The one thing we all need. Beloved, I ask you to walk worthy of the vocation to which God has called you and me. Be a good servant so he can say to you, well done, my good, my faithful servant. It's an honor to be a servant. I think maybe we should stop and think that is more important than to have any label under our name or over our name. I know we have to have one for the world's sake, but oh, to be known as the servant of God, a true, righteous, holy, good, clean-hearted, pure hands and pure heart, honest to God, servant. Come into that servanthood now. Serve your pastor well. Serve your teacher, your evangelist. Serve the church and then serve the world. And in that, you're serving the Lord. Thank you for listening to my little word this morning. It was a long word, I know. Thank you for hanging in and hanging on. Bless you, and if you need any prayer, call Charmaine, my heart light line, all right? Bless you. She'll be there for about an hour after our show today. Catherine, good morning, my little morning. love. <coughs> Boy, I had a lot of servanthood in me this morning. <laughs> serve, 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 serve. Praise How have Lord. you been serving my little one? Well, praise the Lord. I got up the other morning and I said, okay, Lord, what's on the agenda? What do you want me to do today? <laughs> <laughs> and so I called this lady because I heard that she was suffering from um, lupus. And you know, lupus can be very disastrous. So anyway, I asked her how she was. She says, oh, I'm getting better, but my legs are so swollen and they're so painful and I can't even carry a bucket of water because she works in a flower shop. And um, so anyway, I started praying for her and all of a sudden she says, wow, Catherine, my legs are getting so hot. I don't know what to do, they're burning and, and it's coming up to the rest of my body. And, and she, so when she said, when I said, now you get up and dance, I always tell people that. And, and she started to get up and try to dance, and that's when the Lord just touched her in such an awesome way. She says, wow, I feel good. <laughs> well, first you get them to receive the Lord. Second, you get them to forgive all, everybody, and forgive themselves, and go through the repentance prayer and forgiveness prayer. And then you pray for the healing, and then you get their feet dancing. Yes. And they get healed by that faith and the action right, of right. getting up and moving. Right. Action. So the next morning I called her. I said, how are you doing? She says, I'm hop, skipping, and jumping all over the place. <laughs> I said, wow, that's neat, you know. Amen. So then that afternoon, the young man that called you that fell down and did something to his knee, uh -huh. and he, he, you had him call me, yeah. And so I said, are you a Christian? He said, yes. I said, do you have anybody to forgive? He said, no. So I said, okay, put your hand on your knee. So I prayed for him. And uh, so I said, okay, now you get up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> and so he did. And he, I said, well, how do you feel now? He says, great. I feel fine. Because <laughs> his knee, I think the cartilage had torn and the water was um, swelling his knee up, and so it was very painful. And uh, so I thought, wow, you know, maybe he needs to go to the doctor or something, but Dr. Jesus is the best doctor, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and so then that night, I had gone to a meeting. I came home at 11 o'clock, and on my recorder, there were two desperate ladies that needed help. 
And so I thought, wow, which one do I call first? So I called this lady, and, and she says, oh, Catherine, she says, this afternoon, something just came on me, and I got so weak I could hardly walk. My husband had to take me home, and I, and I don't know what's happening to me. And, and she was all frightened, you know, and I thought, oh, boy, she's having an aneurysm or a heart attack or a stroke or something, yeah. you know. And, and she, she could barely talk, and so I prayed for her, and, and she said, I told her to get up and dance. I don't remember that. But anyway, she said, the minute you said that, she said, I started feeling really good. And, and I felt great. Well, so I, she didn't tell me that because I was in a hurry to call this other lady. And so uh, 10 minutes later, I thought, wow, I better call her. Maybe tell her to go to the hospital. Maybe she had a stroke or something. I was kind of worried, you know. And I, I called her, and I said, how you doing? She said, wow, Catherine, I've been running around and skipping and jumping all over the place. I was praising the Lord. I said, wow, that was fast, you know. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so what we've got with Catherine now, she's a hospital hopper, but what we've got now is she says, receive Jesus first, forgive, and then go and dance and jump around and hop around. Oh, no, be healed. And then go yes. dance and jump around. So that's the four spiritual laws of Catherine <laughs> Fragino. Receive the Lord as your personal Savior. Forgive everybody and yourself. And receive healing from the blood of Jesus. And then go and tell everybody and dance and skip and hop around and be healed. You know, it's no fun not to be able to walk. Do you ever get your little toe hurt? or something you can't walk, or you get something, a piece of glass in your foot, or something, and you can't walk, or your feet hurt from chopping too much. <coughs> That's me. From chopping too much. When your feet hurt, your whole body hurts. And when your knee hurts, everything hurts. I mean, not to be able to walk is a hard place to be in. And I just pray that God has takes hold of your footsteps today. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Keep stepping in the Lord. The steps of a good man and woman are ordered of the Lord, and he wants you to dance and step lively and be happy, even though you might be old. And I don't know if we've got that word infirm. We don't want to use that word infirm. That, that isn't even in the Christian vocabulary. We're going to wipe that one out. Be, be older and young, younger. That's what I put, you know. And now I'm going to go over. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, praise the Lord. I love you. And I always shift all my calls over to you. <laughs> all over. Let them go to Catherine. Get healed. You know, each one of us have a ministry that we should value and esteem highly in love for the work's sake. That's one of my most precious scriptures I hold on to. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, I had the pleasure of being with you and darling my bell over there, Lois Bell. <laughs> She's ringing my bell yesterday and your precious husband, Dean. We had a, a conference at lunch. Yes. We must have been there how many hours we rented the table? Well, I don't know, we got our money's worth. <laughs> I hope they got <laughs> <laughs> their money's worth. Yeah. But I had a delightful time getting to know all of you. And you're from the Roses of Sharon. Now, why did you call your church the Roses? Is that because you had so many women, no. Roses? Didn't start out that way. It started out that the Lord told me to teach people to pray. It just started a little Bible study. So finally I got to the point, well, what, shall I, what shall I call this? And then we've got to have a name after we started. Uh -huh. So he said, call it the Roses of Sharon. And it seems sort of unusual and kind of feminine, you know. But the, the Lord showed me that we are to emanate Jesus Christ. He is the Rose of Sharon. And we are the roses. We are the ones that are to follow and to try to model, role model our life after Jesus did. So therefore, we are roses. And you know, roses don't come male or female. Oh, they don't? No. And they don't come, they're not all tree roses, and they're not all vine roses, and they're not all wild roses. And they need pruning, and they need trimming, and they need training, they need talking to. You have to spray them once in a while, yeah. get the bugs off. Yeah. You have to, you know, to attend to them. Are they not valuable? And they go so, through seasons. Seasons, definitely. You've got to remember that, where they've got mm -hmm. nothing on them. Some are very mature, and some are just buds that need to be brought into full bloom. And uh, then there's a time of waiting for them to bloom. Different fragrances, different colors, different tending. And if they're not watered, they dry up, too. And so you can be the Rosa Sharon, because Jesus is a Rosa Sharon, and he was a male. Uh, absolutely. So mm -hmm. we know that 
the roses can be both male and mm -hmm. female. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. I love the roses of the body. Sometimes you know you go to take a hold of a rose and you get the thorn, but that's all right. You just mm -hmm. you know, you say, it's all right. it well. you know, you bleed a little bit. You, you just say, That's okay and then when you take it the next time you're more careful. Mm -hmm. You know where to take hold of them. And Do take you know the what thorn we off. call our prayer line? What? The rose is vine. The rose is vine. Yes, we have a prayer vine. Divine vine. Yes. The when, divine line. When people call in on our rose's vine, well, then they are liable to get almost any rose that happens to be on duty that day. Oh, <laughs> and for nice. whatever ministry gift they have. And you're so. in Upland, California. Where is that, darling? It's between San, uh, at San Bernardino and Los Angeles. We're in the foothills of, of uh, the Mount Baldy. And uh, we have a home ministry, but we also have meetings in a, we use the, a vineyard church facility that we share. Uh -huh. And so we have training, a tra training meetings there, a lot of intercession. We, it's, uh, the basis of our ministry is teaching people to pray. I see. Very effective. I do a lot of um, corporate prayer groups. Mm -hmm. We just finished the uh, National Day of Prayer that I facilitated for the whole valley. And... Um, was a very large gathering. Uh, I teach people how to lead corporate prayer groups as well as individual and personal prayer and small prayer groups and, and small prayer sessions. Uh -huh. There's uh, many different times and ways that God wants us to gather together to pray besides our own personal prayer time. And, uh, so, and we need training because oh, it gets yes. boring. If somebody doesn't come along and, and teach you uh -huh. uh, a new avenue or a new, a new arena of prayer so that it's an adventure. Prayer is an adventure. Amen. It's like she and wakes up every morning and she says, what today, Lord? Pastor Donna, you were a teacher how many years? Uh, I was a public school teacher in California for 26 years. 26 years. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord got a hold of you. And so for, what, the last 10 or so years you've well, been... Well, I started teaching Sunday school when I was 12. Oh, my. <laughs> and uh, they really needed a teacher bad in the Baptist Church and uh, so that was when my career really began and then I never probably ever had a time in my life when I wasn't teaching some way or another in the church even though I was doing public school teaching but after I retired I really heard I really heard the voice of God saying teach my te people to pray mm -hmm. and this is our 10th anniversary so I've done it 10 years my. And it's been an exciting thing because people from all the nations come and, and sit with us and, uh, and work with us and learn uh -huh. new ways of prayer. Tell them a little bit what you did at a church the other night. I thought it was so fabulous. So they know it, you're just not a teacher, but you have that life in you that flows out. You girls were over there with your, hus <laughs> your husband and um, our dean is Bartram mm -hmm. or Bartram. And what was happening in the church there? What did God show you to do? It was so neat. Well, when the Lord told me to come to Hawaii, he said that he was going to pour out, he was going to bring a new holy anointing oil for Hawaii. And as I began ministering and teaching, I saw that uh, he, this, this anointing needs to be put upon the body of Christ and upon the believers to raise up an army of believers. And you wouldn't have an army if you didn't have people in position, rank and order. And nobody would be in an army without knowing what they were supposed to do. And you can't be self-appointed. You can't just say, I'm going in the army and be a captain. Right. So you have to have some sort of a, um, a pointing out, or we might call it in, in the church or in, the, in our realm, an, an ordination or an appointing of this is what God wants you to do. And uh, so we'd been given a teaching uh, of setting people into the army of God. Uh, as I've been here in Waikiki and, and Honolulu, I've seen so much uh, spiritual warfare that the church really needs to give attention to. Yeah. And so she and I had, uh, <laughs> had begun with the help of my husband, who's a military man, because <laughs> we, we don't know anything about the army. <laughs> he began finding out the different needs. We'd call them callings in mm -hmm. the army. Mm -hmm. And so as the anointing came and we were ministering and praying for the people, we began calling them into the army and establishing them as sharp shooters and flamethrowers and generals and captains and uh, <laughs> Joshua's and, and uh, Miriam's and, 
And uh, it was really, it was lots of fun because we were as excited as they were because we didn't know what the leading of the Lord was going to say. These, we not knowing these people either. Uh, as we went around the circle to pray for them, the Spirit of God was just establishing an army of people here on this island in a position of where they were to be. And they the, were delighted. No, the paratroopers that are to go down and jump in the midst of the enemy's camp, the intercessors that were the watchmen on the wall, the guards that were to be watching over the army to see what was happening, and, and the women that were going to bring home the victory, bring home the loot. You know, the women get to take the spoils of war and mm -hmm. from their intercession, and it was, it was very exciting. We, <laughs> and I, I know that God is, uh, has been birthing in a tremendous revival uh -huh. here, particularly on this island. And uh, because there are so many people here that are ready to birth. Yes. They're ready to step in to that calling and to that place that God has for them to step into. They've just been waiting for somebody to come and say, uh, God needs you to, to be an intercessor. God needs you to be a witness. God needs you to be a handmaiden of the Lord and so forth and so on. And uh, as we've been traveling around and, and ministering in the different churches, we've seen that he's really just called us to here to let him pour out the anointing mm -hmm. and, the, and the oil as we just begin to identify what he tells mm -hmm. us to say. Because there's a, a, a real revival. It's here. Mm -hmm. The people are in the groaning and travailing stage. They're yes. bringing it in. And you're going to see a mighty, mighty move of God here. I believe that. Tremendous move. And some people are ready to be promoted. Mm -hmm. Some people mm -hmm. just need to know a revelation of who they are in the body of Christ and mm -hmm. where they can get in there and get into rank well, and, and what to look forward to. Some want to stay in the army and graduate on up and some are just happy being foot soldiers mm -hmm. and going to war, being mm -hmm. mighty intercessors mm -hmm. and we need them all. Mm -hmm. We need from the foot soldier right up to the general oh, yes. and mm -hmm. the chief. We can't all be captains. Is the Lord. No. <laughs> And we, we need to all work together. Yes. The people need to know how to follow the leader, too. That's the servant again uh -huh. with the master. They need to know that there's, a, that there's a leader and that God has a plan. And it brings, it's talking, God's talking about unity in the church. Unity in the, on the island, within the churches. Not only the church, but unity in the family, restoration in the family. Restoration among the, the ministers of God and restoration upon the land and then moving on out into restoration of the nations because as Hawaii gets a hold of this vision and begins making it happen here because the nations of the world come here yes and what you have to impart to the people that come to this land is what they take back to the nations that they come to here from and we have met meet people here from oh Portugal Germany you know just yeah, China, uh, Japan, every nation almost we could think of has crossed our path in just a few days' time. So that means the people of the world, and God's very concerned about the nations. Mm -hmm. So he's bringing nations here to receive from the impartation of the Spirit of God and the Word of God that's within the people in Hawaii to take back to their nations to strengthen the body of Jesus Christ. Well, Sister uh, Donna, in Azusa Street, as I was watching it on the TV the other night, that is what the minister who started in Azusa Street was trying to do, is bring unity to all the different nationalities, blacks, whites, Spanish, uh, whatever, yeah. all of them together. God wanted them to blend together, to love one another, and to serve one another. Mm -hmm. And that, from that point of Azusa Street, all of the Pentecostal churches all go right back down to that Azusa Street experience in 1906. God at that time wanted his church to be one. He didn't want a black church over here and a white church over there. He wanted just churches. The whole body is the church. Everybody, the church of Honolulu, the church of Hawaii, all the different churches, just the church of Hawaii. And your mm -hmm. church would be the church of California. You're all the body of California. 
And you know what? When catastrophe comes, that's what happens. People forget their names and their labels and who they are and what they are, and they come together and they work together and serve one another in love. And they don't say, oh, are you a Baptist? Well, I can't serve you mm -hmm. uh, because I'm Pentecostal, but I'll go serve the Pentecostal I can find. Yeah. We mm -hmm. serve when there are tragedies, mm -hmm. such as in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody jumps in. Mm -hmm. Red Cross, Blue Cross, mm -hmm. serve, whatever. We all jump in and we become servants and we don't yeah. think about our lives mm -hmm. or our backgrounds or our doctrines. The walls must come down for unity mm -hmm. because the devil has got such a plan and a plot against us. But if we're unified, we're just going to kick him here and there and everywhere, aren't we? Amen. Sister, I would love for them to see, you're a teacher like my grandmother was a school Mormon teacher and the one little, but that was a long time ago, one little house, you know, she did. But you have a wonderful sense of humor and a wonderful laugh. And I was saying to you the other day that I think more women should be adorned. Mm -hmm. Not ordained, but adorned. <laughs> oh, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and you laughed over that. And truly, that's what God wants to do. Because we are ordained, but women need to be adorned. Because they don't mm -hmm. love themselves. They don't like themselves. And I speak from personal. You say, oh, d Phyllis feels that way? Yeah, ask Catherine. Many times I have low self-esteem. Yeah. I wonder if I can make it. Yeah, I yeah. wonder who's going to show up on the show sometimes. Because yeah. today they didn't show up. <laughs> so I got these two girls to come. <laughs> it's a day by day living in the power of God, right? <laughs> living every moment mm -hmm. for what God's going to do. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. But women especially need to know that they are loved yes. and they need to be nourished. And that's something I'd like to talk a little bit to you about, my friend over there, my bell, mm -hmm. my Lois <laughs> bell. In that you've worked with a lot of women. You're a counselor. This is what Donna said. You're a top chief counselor in the church. Yes. With self-esteem, low self-esteem, what is that about now? Because you've both got lots of experience behind you. What is that all about? A low self-esteem is not knowing who you really are in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Um, the Lord has spoken to me many times to raise up women bring them out, raise them up in ministry. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, women need to be healed of the hurt that has come down uh, to us from Eve. And women, uh, many women that I deal with, that I counsel on a daily basis in my office, come with low self-esteem, not feeling worthy mm -hmm. of even participating of feeling inferior because this is the vendetta that the enemy has put upon women. Mm -hmm. And many women um, are just covered with what we call toxic shame. There's a secret in the church. And the secret, the well-kept secret is that there is abuse of women within the church. Uh, there's verbal abuse, there's emotional abuse, and spiritual abuse and before these women can come into the place of strength in the army of God they must be healed they must know who they are mm -hmm. and the Lord has said to me Lois I want you to raise them up and I am particularly reminded of one woman she's about 66 years old who came to me a year ago. And at first I didn't want to take her. And because the Lord had not said, I want you to minister to her. But she persisted, as the woman in the Bible did. And I finally took her. She came from a family that gave her away. She oh. was sold in Arkansas My. just 50 years ago to a farmer who beat her and used her oh, to plow. Look right in there. Who beat and her and used yes. her to plow. And this woman came for healing. She married an abusive man. And I don't know if this sounds like your story, but I believe that as Edith came for healing, she came to this place to receive the love and the healing balm of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord began to heal the wounds. 
And then he began to heal the wounds of her marriage because the man was abusive. You see, she was a victim. She was a victim. And we can be victims. But the Lord says that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And because we were put there doesn't mean we have to stay there. This woman now, now, lays hands on people with her broken fingers that were broken, with her battered legs. She lays hands on people, and they are miraculously healed. We have a, a healing service called Women of Compassion, and she is part of this. And as she ministers the love of Jesus to people who come into my living room, she lays her hands on them. And they instantly are healed of migraine headaches, of broken backs, of hurts, emotional pain. You see, no matter how degraded we have been, no matter how we have felt in the past, through love and through the healing power of Jesus Christ, you can be set free. You can be set free as a victim. You can be set free to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ with your life because this is what it is all about. Glorifying Jesus Christ through the healing power of the cross and of the blood of Jesus. And here is little Edith. She's just maybe four and three quarter feet, maybe weighs 100 pounds, but she's a mighty woman in the army of God. And she's a frontline intercessor. She's one of those generals that lays hands on, all because she was taken from a pit of despair, of ridicule, of hurt and shame that had been heaped upon her. She came up to where the light was, where Jesus Christ was, and she was set free. Sometimes, Lois, women have had the petals of their rose taken off one at a time until they have nothing left but the yes. little end with just the little yes. pistons and whatever yes. is on there. Yes. How do you put the petals back on the Rose of Sharon through the Rose of Sharon? Will you give that right directly to someone right now who feels stripped and, and naked before God? The, I, I believe that the Lord has shown me to put the petal back on one by one. It is a process. But when you come and say, Lord Jesus, I give you who I am with all the shame that was in me, with everything that surrounded me. I yield myself to your healing power that you might make of me that, and only you, Jesus, can do this. You see, we can be stripped, but he is mighty, and he is a lover of our souls. And he brings us into his embrace through the power of the fluffy arms of the Holy Spirit who holds us and embraces us. And we come to him just as we are. The past is a part of us. The past is still with us. But we go beyond that place. And we know, and you can know, that Jesus is very aware of you that he wants to minister to you right today. So we say, Lord Jesus, come. Come with all my hurt. Come to my broken heart and touch me and raise me up and heal me. For you love me and I forgive others as you have forgiven me. And that is the secret, Phyllis, yes. is the power to forgive. You know, Lois, sometimes our mothers themselves, without meaning to, have taken off petals. Our fathers. Yes. Uh, the people yes. who are closest to us that love us. Yes. Sometimes a minister will do it not yes. meaning to. Yes. The mother didn't mean to, the, or maybe sometimes yes. they did. Yes. But you both have a ministry of raising women up. But first you get the petals back on, 
and then you show them who they are, and then you see them open up no. like this and become a full-blown general. Yes. yes. And what you're saying to me, Donna, is that women can become generals and captains. Yes, in the <laughs> army of God. Go on a little bit of that. <laughs> well, we've just all got calls and mantles. We were born with the calling of God within us. And many people never reach that potential because they never come to somebody that helps to open them up to reveal to them what the calls and medals are. Mm -hmm. Sadly, sometimes we've stepped on the rose right in the face mm -hmm. and crushed it, but instead the rose became a beautiful perfume mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. A potpourri. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Potpourri. And all the petals that are taken off yes. of all the women have come in and mingled together. Yes and become a beautiful fragrance and yes. incense to the Lord through prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there will be an army of men and women yes. and boys and, and girls. girls. <laughs> As Joel said, my spirit mm -hmm. will fall upon all men, boys and girls, men and women. Yeah. And I believe children are going to rise oh, up yes. <laughs> and they're going to tell it on television like it really is. Definitely. And they're going to tell grandma and grandpa and all of us how mm -hmm. they saw heaven how they spoke to an angel, how they saw Jesus, how they saw hell. And we're going to listen up because God is going to begin to reveal himself to his people. Amen. Amen. And especially sure. the simple and believing at heart. We have a few minutes left, darling. What is on your heart, Donna? Thank you, Lois. Yes. That was excellent. I'm sure someone really received that and got her petals back today. <laughs> what is on your heart, Donna? You've well, written down here. I think that the message of God that's been to me this year is that it came at Easter time when I saw Mary going to the tomb to minister to Jesus, to the body of Jesus. She'd walked with him. She knew how to minister. If we see women today uh, ministering in the church, ministering to the body of Jesus Christ, to the people that are within the church, I think the Lord is saying minister to the body of Jesus Christ. Because the body of Jesus Christ, the people that we know, the people that, that touch us in whatever church we happen to attend or fellowship, whatever, it's not the denomination that's important. It's, um, it's you know, when, when we leave this place, they're going to know we've been here. Because as people within the church, which is the body of Jesus Christ, are being ministered to, then there's a wholeness comes, there's a healing comes. Mm -hmm. And we've been told that, that we need to not only love one another, but, and, and it's not to make a big click out of the church, mm -hmm. but from this body of believers, the people go out of there when they're well and whole and not wounded anymore and go out and bring in the harvest and bring in the bride. I think the bride's going to be multi-ethnic, multicultural. God is God. going to bring forth a bride that is all colors from all the nations. And we've got to reach into the nations and see and encourage revival. Right. But that comes out of the body of Jesus Christ is where this comes out of. The people that identify with the church of the living God are the body of Jesus Christ. Well, Donna, there were women like Mary that wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus. And she ministered to him in an unusual way with highly costly ointments. Yes. And she cried on his dusty feet and wiped those feet with their hair. There were always women in the Bible ministering in the home, seeing to it that Jesus' needs were met, that he was fed, he was clothed. We, I've heard the preachers preach mm -hmm. on this, so I know it's through. <laughs> And so there are Marthas and there are Marys, and sometimes the Marys are not understood mm -hmm. by the Marthas. And we, we are all needed in the body. Some mm -hmm. will just be in the prayer closet interceding on their knees, mm -hmm. the women and pleading before yes. God. And then we who are out in the front are successful because of their pleading. Mm -hmm. So we need one another. Tremendously. We need yes. to flow together. Yes. I need the wonderful intelligence of the Holy Spirit that God's given you and the prayer. Now, you know, you're teaching on prayer. Where can we reach you? Over there in Upland. I want to make sure mm -hmm. the roses yeah, of Sharon <laughs> get up again on our yes. Chiron. 
You can mail it. I I am speaking at the Hawaiian Handmaiden Saturday. Oh yes. So I'll be I will be appearing on the island. <laughs> Madeline Maines over yes. there at the Assembly of God at nine o'clock sharp. At nine o'clock sharp. In the Red Hill at, at Red Hill Room One Hundred One. Okay. And uh, it'll be a, a, it'll be a wonderful meeting to, to see what God is going to do. Well, she mm -hmm. is in charge of the handmaidens, and that is a beautiful group of women. Mm -hmm. And she's worked hard. Talk about service and being yes. a servant. She is yes. one. One of the yes. most beautiful women I yes. know of, by the way. Yes, certainly yeah. is. And I want to just thank you girls for coming, and my Catherine for coming, and Donna's husband sitting over there mm -hmm. looking love at us and <laughs> yes. promoting love. And <laughs> You know, we want to thank you, too, for coming today. If you feel like you have lost some petals along the way and some people came along and picked at you and picked at you and took off petal by petal, dear lady, you could be a man too, please know that when you meet the rose, Jesus Christ, the rose of Sharon, he will bring you back into a fullness again He'll give you a bud. He'll make you feel fresh and clean, brand new. You'll come up out of nothing. You'll become a new creature, a bud. And then he'll just put his love on you, and you'll bloom for the Lord again. You know, there's a scripture that says, even though a tree has been cut down, yet it shall grow again at the kind of the smell of the water nearby. So if you've been cut down and you're a little rose just sitting there in the vase and there's no water in there, God wants to take you, put you in the living water again, cause you to be revived and make you fresh and new again, give you his love, his peace, his joy. Everything that the rose of Sharon has, you will have and become. Today, won't you let him come into your heart? You know, your heart has been so heavy. You said, well, I know there's a call on my life. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do in my church. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. He'll begin to show you how to go about in your life, to do the things that please him. If you get busy, become busy, with the business of the Lord, your Father's business, while well, he'll take you into all kinds of wonderful adventures and into the avenues that you belong. If you have a call of a prophetess on your life or an evangelist or a teacher or a pastor and you're a woman, go find a woman pastor and say, how is it to be a woman pastor? What can I do? Or if it's a teacher or a counselor, how is it being a counselor? What can I do? <clears throat> or if it's a prophet, go find a prophet and say, what does it take? What shall I do? God's called me to be this way. And you know the Lord will lead you and guide you. And my voice is going, praise the Lord. Thank you guys so much for coming. It's the first time in six years my voice has kind of left me. But that's all right. The Lord hasn't left me. We love you. Don't forget the Handmaidens meeting Saturday. And don't forget TV breakfast at Ala Moana. Call and make reservations. We want to see your roses there, your happy smiling faces. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. And call my little prayer partner if you want to talk a story today and talk your heart out. All right? We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye now. <laughs>